Oh, I'm trying to let it time again. It's, it's 5.31 p.m. Today's date is January um, 27th, 2022, Clearview Library District Board of Trustees regular meeting. Um, I call this meeting to order. Um, could we do a roll call, please? All right. Adams. I am here. Brodsky. Here. Dunworth. I am here. Balderrama. Here. Gerstner. Here. Alternate Basler. Here. We also have with us attorney William Garcia. Here. And as far as staff, we have Casey Lanzinger Pierce, who is our public services manager, Emma Malin, who is our IT tech assistant tonight. And online, we have Natalie Wagner, who is taking minutes for us and Aaron Mitchell, who is the library's bookkeeper HR assistant. All right, great. Th thank you, Anne. Um, are there any changes to the agenda? There are not. All right. Um, do we have any public input at this point? Okay. If that were to change, is it Emma? Emma, are you doing that? Yeah, she is. <laughs> okay. All right. If we were to get someone in the next few minutes, we'd go ahead and entertain that information. Um, Director Clean, well, communications, please. We have no communications to report at this meeting. Monthly statistics, please. So, does anybody have any questions on the statistics? Um, along with the regular um, charts that Amy Moore uh, provides for us. She also did a nice memo on year end, year end stats. I hope everybody had a chance to look at their board packet and look at that document. She kind of summarized what's been going on um, in our second year of COVID. And thank you, I, Amy. She does a good job in representing our numbers in a way that people can understand them. I just had a couple clarification questions. Um, um, on, in November, Bookmobile and Outreach were significantly down. Now they were back up in December. I'm curious um, what, what that was. I'd have to bring up the stats. Casey can address that. Well, uh, one of the big things that we did do in December was Windsor Wonderland. Yeah. So bring up the stats and see. Casey will bring up the numbers so she can kind of give us an idea of what happened. Okay, because they were down in November, up in December, um, and quite significantly down, I thought, as far as IT for bookmobile and outreach. Um, they're right there. Patrons served in bookmobile and outreach. Bookmobile and outreach. No, those were up. No, now where is it? Okay. Yeah, we had 521 people from Windsor Wonderland in December. Mm -hmm. But it was quite down in November, and I didn't know. Um, yeah, month over month, or month over month was at like 99% down on outreach. I, I can't, we can't, Jeremy, we can't hear you. Oh, you cannot? Mm -mm. Okay, I'll fix that in a moment. You're kind of echoey. Yeah. I was just curious if there was a reason that, you know, why it was, I mean, you said winter wonderland, but we didn't have a whole lot in outreach. Um, the numbers in November look pretty typical. December just went up a little bit because we had, we counted five, a little over 500 people at a special event. Um, and then October, you saw really high numbers because again, a couple special events, soccer Saturdays, uh, when we staff okay. that event that always, mm -hmm. you know, sees our numbers go up because that's an additional day that we're mm -hmm. servicing the community. So okay. that change from October to November is pretty standard to see a drop because October, there's a lot of activities going on. November, people start to sing. Be stay home. Yeah, <laughs> especially they, when it gets dark earlier, we see a, a, a definitely a drop when daylight savings hits. Um, goes away. You know, people or goes away. Sorry, people still come out, just not quite as as many when it's dark out. Probably, and it's cold out. 
I probably ask this in every year at this time. Um, <laughs> okay. You will see a drop once, especially for Bookmobile, once it gets cold out. People don't come out as much in the evening as they do during the warmer months. So neither do I. I leave, as we all know. Um, and, and then databases increase were quite a bit down. Previous year, remember that in November of uh, 20. 20 we closed again because of covid Incredible. so um it, you know there was a point where we had to stop because the numbers got so high and mm -hmm. we pulled the bookmobile off the road and we closed the library doors and went to takeout so that was at the end of 2020 so for 2021 the year over year statistics are higher because we were out actually out okay. on the road yeah. in 2021 and then I also noted that noticed that database was quite a bit down. I can't remember which month it was. Um, and I'm guessing that has to do with people being back at school and that kind of thing. Databases are always so uh, a puzzle. <clears throat> there are months when it's up and you don't expect it to be up. And then there are months when it drops significantly. And I do believe that has to do with how much they're being used in our schools. Okay, yeah, because that would have been some vacation time and whatnot. Okay, fair enough. I just I just noticed it and I thought, well, that seems kind of funny, but no problem. Thank you. That's all I had on. Well, wait, I did have one other. I'm sorry. I'm being a pain. Um, um, and I'm not sure if this is in data. Um, so if I need to wait, let me know. Um, we removed fine. I know. I can't remember. We're getting a lot. Renewals are way up. That's what it was. And I'm wondering, is that because we implemented the, we implemented the auto renewals and we also removed fines, are we getting our materials back? Yes, um, we are. Okay, that's <laughs> all I mean. it, usually what happens is, you know, someone fails to bring it back and then it goes to a lost book and then they get a notice that says, okay, you lost this book. Now you owe us the cost of the book and then they bring it back. Oh, um, so, I like that. Okay. So it's not that they can keep it forever. Eventually <laughs> it goes to lost and then they don't wanna pay for the entire book and, or movie or whatever, and then they bring it back. So yeah, they are books. I mean, we still have people who walk away with our stuff and they go to collections agency and we try to, get our stuff back. Um, but, you know, that's been consistent over the years. People will try to steal things. Of course they will. All right. That's all. I was just curious but, because of those two policy chain, because we had those two changes and I was wondering, that's all. Jeremy, did you have a question that we couldn't hear? No. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me, but no, I'm good. I, st I still can't hear. He said he was good. He was good. Okay. For some reason, we're having a problem hearing him in this room. I, okay. I have a question if I can. Yes, Scott. Hey, thank you. And good evening. Hey, so one of the things that I found kind of interesting since everything was kind of during this pandemic and everything, everything was driven uh, from home and online. But when we look at the, 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 the data of right up before on the website stats, am I reading that wrong? So that's down 22% from last year of the website use. And there's another statistic below that that's up 7%. So I wasn't, see right there? Right there, website. Oh, oh up, up. Okay. There's two of them. There's one right up right there, 22.2% down. A little bit farther. There Is that 2021 right there? Is that the way I'm seeing it? So the first number is the change from the previous month. Right. So that's the change from October, or I, that's November. I'm, I don't know if that's November or December. It's December. So that's the change from November is the use of the website. And once again, libraries see a, a cyclical kind of use of the library where once the holidays come along, people stop using the library as much as they did. Then we'll see another drop uh, in May when the kids get out of school, because for a couple of weeks, they just aren't interested in anything library. 
And then as soon as summer adventure program starts, then numbers pick up again for June and July. Then you see another slight drop in August, right before they go back to school, because everybody's getting ready to go back to school, getting their new clothes and taking their last vacations before school starts. And then you'll see once school gets back in, the numbers will go back up. And then once the holidays hit, the numbers go down again. So it's very much tied to what people are doing. You'll see numbers go down on holiday weekends, which is why we close on Memorial Day weekend and Labor Day weekend, because no one was interested in coming to the library on that uh, Sunday and Monday. And so it wasn't worth staying open. So there are cyclical things that you will see and you will see with the website, I mean, we had an uptick when we changed over to the new website, um, but you will see from you know month to month, depending on what people are up to, and you'll see changes. So it does on the website stats, it looks like it's down from a year ago, but if we were closed, then we had more people possibly looking for online resources. So, and if you, I mean, November's down, but if you scroll to December, it's up. So, yeah. so I, okay. I, I might have been reading that as though that's twenty two percent from yeah that's year to date and really no, it's month, to month, month to month month right yeah the, the numbers of these charts are a little too granular you really can't spot trending because well I think that's thirty what days the, uh, that's what the line the spark the lines are what, yeah I know I get that that's all the way to the yeah so that's, that's December the, versus December not right yeah December. It's it's November. Yeah. So November is down, but if you go down here, you'll see December pops back up again. So it's not so, year over year, it's just a, just a month to month. Comparison. Right. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Yep. And our new website did make it easier for people to use um, the website and find what they were looking for. So. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of great information in our data and throughout our library, online services and everything, all, all the services we offer. So um, it's interesting, just kind of watch it, um, the trending. Um, are there any other questions on the statistics? Okay, with that, without further ado, we'll go over to um, Rochelle and Brodsky for our personnel report. So I'll, I'll do the personnel report for Rochelle. Um, we really have had no one leave, or we had no one leave in November and December other than Bud Hunt. Um, we are, I can give you an update on what's happening with our positions. So we, we did a lateral switch for Nancy Milliken. Nancy was our children and family services librarian, and we hired her to replace Andrea Cleland as our early literacy librarian, which then opened up the children and family services <laughs> librarian and we've actually offered someone the job but they're in the process of a background check so we don't want to release their name yet um for the most part people have always passed their background checks but we we never know um and then uh, we're in the process of interviewing for the it tech services manager next week we have three six three days where we have six hour interviews where people are coming in uh, to meet with the IT and tech services staff and then to meet with the full time staff, get a tour of our building and get to see the Ash Street property and the Severance property. And then the following Monday, we have a fourth interview. And at that point, I hope there'll be someone that we can offer the IT tech services manager job to the communication specialist. We've offered the job to someone that person is also in the process of having a background check done, so we don't want to release their name. If they pass their background check, they'll be starting on uh, February 14th. So it'll be good to have a communications person back on staff again. And um, those are all of the openings. It will be in the next month's report, but business librarian Kelly Hall uh, had her last day on Tuesday. And so we'll be looking at what we need to do with that position, whether we need to hire another business librarian or if we need someone else, someone different in that capacity as a part-time librarian. Um, that's all I have on personnel. Are there any questions? No, doesn't look like it. So thank you, Ann.
and um, we'll keep going on. We'll go right to treasurer's report. Let remind let me remind everyone we have November and December treasury reports this month because we um, our meeting um, was December 9th. Is that correct, Ann? Um, yeah, right. Yeah. So we have and two so months worth of reports. We have two months report because we couldn't get those done in time for the meeting. So um, take it away, uh, Treasurer Dunworth. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, in the Treasurer's report, you do have two columns, the, uh, the November and the December results. So the, the, the November results are basic vanilla we didn't get a lot of money in. We had expenses and the numbers balance out. In December, we closed with a cash balance just a little north of $7 million, $7 million, $3,000. Um, you, you see that as a month to month change between November and December, $247,000, which pretty well reflects expenses. Some expenses were up simply because of the character of the time of the year, which is we have to pay for software licensing and a few other things that can do. So they're a tad high. But if you really uh, take a look at where we stand in terms of performance, we uh, close the year out at 118% of budget on revenue. We mean uh, we had some extra money came in. And I think we've talked about it in the past that the extra money was from delinquent taxes to the tune of about $76,000, well, $760,000, excuse me from last year, as well as penalties they paid on those taxes to us of $88,000. So Good job collecting it, Ron. What's that? Good job collecting it. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's kind of where we're standing. So at the end of the year, we close with our expenses at 98% of budget. And that included a $750,000 purchase of the Astri facility. So uh, what, what that amounts to really for us in, in real terms is that we don't have to make a budget adjustment to, 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 the, to our, the government entities in order to be compliant. Uh, we can close out and say, hey, things are good. Plus, we're going to leave that $750,000 as an expense to the year, if you will. And that gives us a greater amount of cash dollars in our reserve fund in order to finish our three major projects. And our three major projects are well on the road. I don't know if we want to recap those now or- um, We'll do that when we do the old business facilities okay. report. So in essence, uh, that's the, uh, the treasurer's report. If anybody has any questions, um, let's hear them. I have a few. Um, what, is, what are staff incentives at 4145? What does that mean? Staff okay. incentives are um, a couple of things. We do a birthday gift for all of our staff. And then also, I think under staff incentives this year, and Erin, you can, Erin's online, she can chime in. Um, we also gave people an internet stipend when they were working more than 50% of the time from home. Um, also their uh, Christmas holiday gift, uh, things like that. What is credit card processing fees? So we have to pay the credit card. When we, patrons use a credit card, we have to pay a processing fee for those. What are they? What are they when they're paying for lost items or the few items that we still charge overdues on, they have to pay a credit. We have to pay a credit card processing fee if they use a credit card. Wow. So it's three and a half percent. It's, it's up there. Well, there, there must be a lot of people paying us on it. If oh. we incurred twenty six hundred dollars of processing it's, fees, it's 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 not as you can see what the um, the amount we collected in lost materials. Most everybody pays with a credit card now. Very few people pay with cash or check. Is, is lost materials and on here? It's on there um, as revenue. So if you look at it's it's actually not on this report, I don't think, unless it's on the balance sheet. But it's, I can- it's on, the, it's on the detailed financials, not the- Not on the, the summary. Report. Not on the summary. So you, you should have- I mean, that run. means if we're about 3% of your, 
that's a hundred thousand dollars worth of lost items. No, I think it was more like four or five thousand well, dollars. In... That you can't have processing fees of twenty six hundred. Like you know, Aaron and I will get back to you on okay. that. All right. So Aaron is um, I have a question. Sorry, I'm sorry. I don't mean like it's hard with everyone. Um, does that include debit cards? Does it, would that be, be... it would be all cards. Yep. No, I, I okay, think that's you. our question about bookkeeping. Okay. Are there any other questions? Um, is that both November? What is an outreach fund? An outreach fund? A, a telephone, I assume. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, outreach has a phone on the bookmobile. Oh, okay. okay. Are there any other questions? I can take one motion to accept both November and December, one separate, in, if, I, if someone would like to make that motion. Uh, so moved. Okay, we have a first from Trustee Gershner. Do I have a second to accept November and December um, budget reports? I second. We have a second from Jeremy. I don't know. I'm not going to, you're going to, I'm going to have to have a lesson on your last name. You're going to be Trustee Jeremy for now. <laughs> um, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Both budgets are accepted. Thank you. And and you'll get back with uh, Trustee Gershner on the couple of questions, correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Um, moving right along, we go back to Rochelle. I don't, does Rochelle, has she had time lately to get? Well, actually, we'll have Casey do the Friends and Foundation report because they had to move their meeting. It wasn't at the oh, last one. that's true. That's, Casey <laughs> wasn't at the meeting either. But um, I think Casey can probably give you a better idea of what's been going on with Clearview Reads. No uh, problem. Thank you. Yeah, Casey. I'll do my best. So they're excited to welcome author James Campbell on Saturday, March 19th. They'll be hosting it up in Severance this year, which is new. We've never done that before. Um, so that's exciting up at the auditorium in Severance um, High School. Um, James Campbell wrote a book called Braving It about, it's the true story of him kind of going on this huge Alaskan wilderness trip with his daughter, who will also be with him at our author event. Uh, currently, our friends and foundation group is trying to determine if they are going to have a big event leading up to the author uh, talk in the evening. They typically do, well, in some years past, they've done a big event leading up to the author event. This year they'd like to do an outdoor jamboree and kind of tie in with that outdoor kind of wilderness themes of the book. Um, but right now they're having um, a challenging time getting commitment from some different vendors that they've reached out uh, that would help make up this event. So that is still TBD. They're making a final decision when they have a meeting on February 4th. And then as soon as they've made that de decision, we'll be moving forward with all our promotions for the author event. Of course, the library always does tie in programming on our end with our programming staff. Um, anytime we host these author events, we like to tie in different programs for all ages that, again, has to do with the themes in the book. Um, and of course, this one is, you know, wilderness, survival, Alaskan animals. We're doing like a Northern Lights watercolor painting class. So, all kinds of things uh, that tie in with the themes of the book. Um, what else is going on with the man? <laughs> I've got updates on the event. I don't know. I'm trying to think what else. Um, That's their big going... focus right now. Yeah, okay. uh, once the event is over in March, then they'll focus on a membership drive to try to increase their membership. So, okay. and of course, this event allows them to try to increase membership as well, try to get people involved. And uh, so they'll set up a table at the author event to, to um, try to recruit people. Okay, I missed, I was taking notes and I missed the title of the book. Oh, Braving It. Braving It, okay, thank you. And then of course, oh, you know- here's another fun update. We will be working with the new bookstore in town, Words of Windsor, to sell books the night of the event. And that's really exciting and should be celebrated because in the past we've always worked with Barnes and Noble. And so now we're really excited that we have a local bookstore, a small business that we can support. 
And the owner there is like thrilled and over the moon that we want to work with her on this. So hopefully that's the beginning of a long partnership with, with Words of Windsor. What does she sell? What kind of books? Just like- oh, all kinds, Ron. You got to get in there. All, seriously, all kinds. She, Anne had a discussion with her right when she opened and she said, you know, it's hard when you're opening a, a bookstore in a community that otherwise doesn't have a bookstore, you don't really know what to order. So she just selected a little bit of everything and just kind of is going to use um, this first year of being open and, and beyond to kind of determine what are people reading in this community? What should she order more of? Um, who else had a question? Um, I, of course, I would love to see part of the event on our new land in Severance. I'm just going to throw that out there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited that they are doing it there this year. We've not done it that so uh, well. So they're doing it at the high school. If they do the jamboree, it's going to be at Eastman Park in Windsor. Yeah, yeah, um, that's just outdoors because <laughs> so of, we'll see. because our property is not exactly graded or ready for people to walk across it. So Eastman Park is a better venue for the jamboree if they can get enough people interested in participating. They have a meeting coming up next week to try to determine whether that there's enough interest. Um, we'll see. And as I always end any item with the Friends and Foundation, I do encourage each and every board member in liaison to be a member. Um, they have multiple options for you. They're not very expensive, but they do a lot of work for us. And I think it's only um, a very, nice way of saying thank you to be a member of their um, foundation. All right, moving right along. Um, reports from liaisons. Um, I, um, I'm gonna pick on Frank first, because he there's a lot going on in Severance. Frank, can you give us a Sever town of Severance? Uh, a lot going on in Severance is really not, uh... <laughs> A good way to phrase it. Uh, so we're still fighting for water, looking for water. Um, uh, we're still under a water moratorium. Um, so I would say that's pretty much where the town's at. Uh, town's mostly been uh, doing our beginning of the year legal reviews of everything. So uh, we had our insurance company before us, our town attorney before us. Uh, Yes, one after the next, uh, all the things, what it means to be on a board, what does it mean to get sued? So it's been a fun start of the year. And before that, we had Christmas, so. Well, I wanna clarify that the town has plenty of water. That's not the problem. It's, right. it's not, the town is set with water. They've been diligent in buying water. And I just wanna make sure that as a board, we're clear on that. Yes, it's only the processing of the water and trying to get our water processed. That's the only issue. Uh, the town uh, did approve our new water tower. Um, it'll probably be an elevated tower, so it's going to go up uh, many feet and you'll see a logo on the side of it and yada, yada, it'll be beautiful. Um, uh, and so we're, we're heading down that road. So uh, yes, we're, we're still continuing down all of our projects uh, for water, and for our, our future. Um, I don't think there's any doubt that we're gonna keep growing. And so we're still on our, our path to grow. Um, but uh, the water processing has just been a, a strange wrinkle that popped up. So, so what, what's the status of water for the branch library? Uh, the town has the water. So we don't need a permit or a tax? We uh, have, we purchased them in our deal. We purchased Watershed and the town. And, uh, we had a discussion with Frank about this last, last meeting. Yeah. So in regards to ensuring that uh, what we should do to ensure that we do have so, that water. So, the, so town, the moratorium does not apply to us. Uh, that's my understanding. Uh, we have um, some taps available for some commercial entities and for the library. That's my understanding from the town manager. Council. Is that, is that, are they bound by contract? I read the contract, let alone, let alone I'm sure what a couple things mean. It's not listed in the contract that it's, uh, that the tap is uh, guaranteed. So I'd be happy to go back and get uh, that in writing. 
And have I mean, you talked to Nick about Otherwise, we're, we're sitting like builders, aren't we? Well, so I think part of the um, part of the right of first refusal was that if for any reason we can't build on the building, that Severance would buy the land back from us. Is that right, Attorney Garcia? That is correct. But we would have to know that pretty soon because we're going to start building a building. <laughs> yeah. Well, section 30.5 is what I'm is what I'm asking uh, of the uh, of the addendum to the contract. And I don't I don't see the, the the language that says that we have a guaranteed water tap and that the moratorium, which was clearly in effect when this was signed, wasn't it? It's we've done several revisions of it. Okay, we just closed what two weeks ago, three weeks ago, right? So yeah, I mean moratorium was clearly in effect. Yes. So my question is, does that apply to us or not? I you're asking to get that information. Okay. Yeah, I think it would fall to uh, our attorney to reach out to. Manager and get that as I say that that turns into a legal question and I will defer to everyone's attorney. <laughs> okay. Anything further with that? <laughs> You're retired. That's all I have, unless you have any more questions, Kendra. You're retired. I, I don't at this time. I just um I know Anne has been in touch with Nick. And we are moving forward. Um, we did pay for it um, at the time. And I know the town wants the library there. So um, I, I think when we signed the contract, the moratorium was thought to have been only through the end of the year. And then I think it did get extended prior to closing, but after the contract. Is that uh, yes, it's extended a few more months, I think. I, I'm trying to remember if it ends in end of February or March. That's my memory of it, though. But the, they, the, yeah. recent, the recent um, output from the uh, city of Severance was it was through June with the hope that it would end by February or March. That was a letter that we just sent to them. Okay. Um, I think there's still a lot of things, balls in the air. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're trying to give uh, developers a heads up of what's going on. Um, so it, it's really a question of, we, we do have some access uh, from the TAPS point of view on our uh, portfolio. Um, I, I do believe that's not enough to handle some of these large neighborhoods that are coming in. Um, and so that's why we're in the position we're in. But at the closing, we paid one hundred thirty thousand dollars for water rights. Correct. Correct. Water yes, share. and, and uh, the information that uh, Trustee Basler is presenting about the uh, the having certain number of taps uh, at their disposal that was presented also at the closing, but I did not get it in writing, and that's what we'll pursue. Okay. All right. Um, I will go on. Um, we do not have. Um, Lance Nickel with the school board. So I will move on and town Windsor. Hi, Scott. It's been a long time. Hi, nice to how see you. How are we doing? Good. Um, well, at first I say congratulations on closing the deal on severance. I think that's pretty great overall. You know, and we all trust that the water situation will get worked out. I know we're doing what we can help do on some of that processing. So we'll continue to try to help as well as a town. But, you know, we haven't been uh, nothing earth shaking over here. We've been finishing out the year as everyone has been. You know, we've finished up all the budgets from the different departments. Uh, we've been finishing up and extending high uh, personnel contracts, employment contracts, and that's been all done. Uh, we are uh, re-evaluating some of the expenses, some of the things that uh, what it's costing us now, you know, like everything with a higher population coming in, it takes more to run it. And therefore, it costs more to run it. So, you know, we've been talking about what fees we can raise uh, or where we can find some more and how much and the right way. So it's been busy on that stuff. We're still working on the sports legend, which is just a, 
a really a fantastic thing that we think we're all excited for. Again, uh, we're expecting a 1.2 million tourists the first year is going. That's a lot. That's a lot of people and 2 million after that. So in all that infrared structure that goes along with that, everyone's jockeying around for positions. Highway 257 is getting realigned and rebuilt with a couple of extra stoplights. I mean, we're really planning for uh, a little invasion there, but it's all very, very positive. That rolls us right into downtown as well. We're trying to work on getting that redone. We're getting ready to have a presentation on the first layout of the downtown redevelopment down there. Again, uh, to uh, account for some of these influx of people that are coming in and the growth of the town. Um, I gotta say right now, we're probably getting about half and half on email about too much growth versus making sure we're managing the growth. You know, it's kind of 50-50 now. But uh, so all that's working out really good, I think. Um, uh, I think that's about really it. We're working hard on finishing up getting that 5G going in town as well as fiber optics so we can stay uh, uh, up to technology. I asked the guy, is there any, are we going to put all this money into all this technology, including fiber optic? Is there anything that's going to come down the road in another four or five years that's going to be better than fiber optic? And I guess his answer was, there's nothing faster than light. So uh, I think we're good on that peace of mind. So that's it. I can't hear you, Kendra. The little red mark told me that uh, after I saw. Um, so Windsor's not having the same issue as Severance. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Just want to clarify that. Thank you. Yeah. And I appreciate you. And I appreciate you always being here. So thank you, Scott. You're welcome. Um, before, um, before, okay, reports for board members. Um, I, moving on along. Um, I did go to the town of Severance um, last board meeting in, in December. Um, it was a very good meeting. Um, Ron was with me and Ann, and um, we got approved to, for the sale. So we've been working on it, and that happened. So um, that was a long time coming. Many, many board meetings, many, many meetings of the mind, so to speak. And so that was my board meeting I attended. Um, we do, um, because we have loosened up enough, um, I know it's hard, but we do need to get back. Um, I know we used to all try to hit several. Um, and Anne, will you be getting that uh, spreadsheet out again? I can do a spreadsheet with all the meetings um, and whether they're virtual or in person. And then if we would start dividing those up and attending those meetings, that would be great. And if everyone could hit um, one, um, and it's also nice if there's an area that you're interested in, if you wanna concentrate on the school board or you wanna concentrate on the town of Severance or the town of Windsor, um, those are the three boards we like to have someone at on a regular basis and also um, friends and foundation. Um, you know, if, if that's somewhere where you really feel like, hey, this is where, where my I want my knowledge, then that might be a good place for you. I'm probably personally going to lean to the school board this year um, and try to hit um, some of their meetings. Um, but it is something we need to do. We have liaisons here, but it's also good for them to see us because they are our partners. Does anyone else have a report as far as one of the... Um, did anyone else hit board meeting? Madam Boss. Yeah. I just, can I just follow up on your comment there too, that I had it on my notes and I kind of skipped it by, but I too am in a position ready now with all that year end stuff to help out in any way I can with the library and anything that we could be working as a town. So just making myself available to you and anything I can assist with. As always, we appreciate that. Thank you, Scott. Right. Um, as far as our board members, um, and and I, you're not a board member, did you hit any other meetings that you'd like to share about? I'm sorry, I didn't. <laughs> it's hard to hear in this room tonight. Oh, I'm sorry, and I forgot my headphones. So um, I'm trying to do the best I can. Okay, moving right along. Um, I did notice, Ann, did I miss um, oh. director's report? No. Oh, 
So we did the director's report. I don't, did anybody have any questions? We did the statistics, but did anybody have any questions on the director's report? Okay, thank you. Okay. We'll move along to old business. And that is the, um, it's just the one meeting, right, Anne? On yes, that. we did the November meeting. So that's what I'm sure. that's, these are the draft minutes from the December 9th meeting. Okay, were there any changes to that meeting? It was really quick. I'll tell you that much. That was probably our fastest meeting in three years. No? Okay. If there's no changes, I do need a motion to approve the minutes for the December 9th, 2021 meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Rochelle. I need a second. Anyone? I'll second, Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> we have a first by Rochelle, second by Jeremy. Um, all in favor to approve the uh, December um, 9th meeting minutes, say aye. 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 Yeah, motion carries. Thank you. Um, all right, moving right along. Anne, I take a deep breath. So You're up. Still facilities plan. All right. Uh, we had a meeting two weeks ago. It was a four hour meeting uh, where Dave Eddy from France and Pittman went through all of the costs for each project, the um, Ash Street project and this project. And we didn't really talk too much yet about severance, uh, but the costs are considerably higher than they were two years ago when we first got cost estimates for this building. And uh, we are kind of limited on the Ash Street building on what we can do as far as remodeling because of the way the building was constructed. So ultimately we found that there wasn't one steel beam that went from one end to another, that that steel beam was kind of cut up into pieces, which meant that some of the changes that ratio had proposed weren't even feasible. But even with that, costs are a little higher than we were anticipating. So Dave was going to go back. Dave Eddy from Friends and Pittman was going to go back and look at other options for both projects. And we have a meeting tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Um, the Windsor project was significantly higher. So he was going to look for some cost savings there. But that's to be expected because when Ratio did the design um, proposal for this building, it was early in 2020. So two years of uh, construction inflation costs have gone by. And so it's, it's a lot more expensive. So we're probably gonna have to think about how we wanna handle that and we'll know more tomorrow. Um, the estimates for when the buildings would be done was the timetable was much faster than we had anticipated. And so uh, they thought that they would be able to start the work on the Ash Street building by April 1st, and that we would probably be in that building by June, uh, which is, is great because then that frees up space in this building to start the work. Uh, they figured it takes about a month to get through the planning process at the town of Windsor. And so they believe they'll start work on this building sometime in June. And then in the meantime, um, they'll be drawing the plans for the severance library and working on that. But they do believe that groundbreaking would happen in October of 2022 and that the project would take a year and that we would be in the building in October of 23. So lots of work to be done, uh, lots, of thing, lots of things that need to happen. Uh, one of the things that happened today um, was that I had a conversation with Chris, our regional representative for DOLA. And the DOLA window opens on February 1st, which is next Tuesday. And proposals have to be in by March 1st. So we have about a month to get a grant proposal written for DOLA. They are much reduced in the amount of funding that they will give. The maximum is 750,000 and not many 
places get the 750,000. Um, the fire district didn't get 750,000. I think they got 250,000. So we'll do our best and it'll be whatever we get, if we get anything will be helpful for the project considering the increased costs. Um, and that's pretty much it. Anybody else who is there, Casey, Ron, Kendra? I'd like to make a couple of comments really quick. One, I had a neighbor, a lot of neighbors reached out to me in regards to the Colorado Energy Office. And the Colorado Energy Office working in conjunction with Excel is providing grant funding support, engineering and design support for getting our buildings in the public domain a, into the greener environment, solar basically. And uh, I've reached out and left a couple of messages. I haven't gotten anything back, but the idea was that Dan Mikestra, who's our, our, our representative, and I would meet with them to understand their program better. The information I reviewed shows that they provide, uh, I'm not sure how they formalize it, but basically they take the savings that you get on energy and they give you credits to handle upfront costs and then they push this process through so it's a net zero cost. So they help you make the building, you know, solarize it, if you will, solar capability to remodify the whole energy structure and architecture to make these buildings greener to help the state comply with their uh, commitment for you know carbon neutral, carbon zero cost. So it's kind of exciting that we can get them to somehow do something in severance, obviously, because that's a brand new construction in the new model. But why not I'll see if they can do something for us in regards to engineering and reworking some of our costs in Ash Street? Because right now we are probably going to have to replace the three or four condensers on the cooling system. And then without talking down about anything else, if, if the opportunity arises that they're willing to pick up the price tag for putting solar cells on this building in order to come to our community, why not? So they, they look for larger packages. They don't want to do little things. If we can combine these in such a way that makes sense, it might be something that uh, we can get cash for, or not money, but get equipment, services, engineering expertise uh, to help resolve some of these uh, cost issues we're starting to face. Are they wanting to really essentially pay for nonprofits doing these kind of things in buildings? Yeah, they don't quite pay for it, but the, what they do is they arrange for capital equipment costs up front to be paid for out of the savings on your monthly energy and they handle all that stuff for you. Yeah, that's kind of what the residential yeah, side of it is. It's but the state's doing the deal. And so right. my goal is to see if there's a way we can come out of this and not have to pay for it. Right. And, uh, and then also long-term we have reduced energy costs which are budget line items that keep going up. Mm -hmm. And um, if nothing comes of it, it's, I still think it's probably well spent in, in trying to research it and understand a little bit better because one of the things I wanna do if I'm still treasurer this year is find better ways to uh, financially uh, support this place. And we'll have conversations about later in the meeting, right, Ann? Right. Okay, so uh, anyway, that was, I wanna add that to a whole you know, construction you know, ideas and thoughts that everybody is aware of what I would like to try to do. I guess one thing to think about with solar um, in, in regards is, is what happens if uh, when the first hailstorm comes through and destroys a bunch of those panels, and who's on the hook for providing that cost? That's something insurance does or is, is there kind of a, 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 a hidden cost in there that, that might be detrimental later on? I can't hear. Oh, geez. I'll repeat it. I heard him fine. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. His his question was to consider what happens when one of our lovely hell storms that we get out east comes through. And I, I, I added the lovely. He did not. Um, but when a hell storm comes through and destroys um, the panels, how does that affect us? How does it affect the insurance policy? And how would something like that work? Jeremy, did I answer that? Say that correctly? Okay. I think those are all fair questions. And this is just going to be the initial meeting, but I'll make a note of that question and any other questions that you send us, uh, make sure we put that out there in front of their team, the state team, as well as the Excel Energy team. Because, yeah, if you, you have a hailstorm that takes out all your panels. You know, what's the process? What's it going to cost us to ensure that? 
Is the offset in energy savings enough to cover the insurance plus put money in the pocket? Those are all fair questions that I think we have to ask. And submit them to me or send them to me if you think of them, and I'll be glad to make sure they, when we have that meeting, we ask those questions. And when you do send those questions, remember to just send them directly to the one person. Otherwise, it constitutes a board meeting. Thank you. Moving along. Any other questions on that? All right. Um, thank you, Ann and Ron. Um, it's been a it's it's been quite the interesting um, experience. Nothing like I've ever participated in. Um, it's been awesome, actually. Um, Director's evaluation update. Um, we're getting close, aren't we, Ann? <laughs> yes, we are. So uh, we did the 360 evaluation through Employers Council. They have finished that and they sent the report to Kendra and myself. Kendra is going to review it and then we'll decide how to proceed. Um, likely to be on the February agenda as an executive session. Um, so stay tuned. I would say it will be on the agenda for an executive session. I think I could commit to getting that done. How about you, Ann? Okay, sounds good to me. All right, let's get her done. All right, thank you. On to new business. Uh, uh, resolution 2201, authorizing the president of the board of trustees to sign and deliver all instruments necessary for the consummation of transaction for five mm -hmm. Timber Ridge Parkway, Severance, Colorado. Um, Anne, would you like to go over that? Yes, so this vote was actually taken via email because we needed to have this done for Kendra to be able to sign the documents for the Severance property. Um, and so this is just to make it a matter of record in our minutes that a vote was taken via email. We had three yes votes and we had uh, two votes two votes where people just, they didn't vote no, they just didn't vote, but three is a quorum. So um, we were able to pass that and Kendra was able to sign the documents. Yay. So it's a, just a matter of record. Bill, did you wanna say something? And for the record, Trustee Vassler did not uh, participate in that vote. And Trustee Gershner did not, because I was not on the board. <laughs> Nor did Jeremy. It would have been our pet previous board. Right. Right. Um, okay. Um, so we need to get that signed. Um, should we do that after we have votes and um, we can have, we, we should sign it so that it's in the record. The document actually was signed by DocuSign. That's so right. it has been signed. It has been signed. Oh, okay. Never That's mind. Right. Thank you. All right, moving right along. Election of board officers and committee members. Um, I think before we go there, we will go ahead and say who's currently on the board that are still members of this board. So um, I'll start with the obvious, Kendra Adams, and I'm running. I'm currently as I'm working as president of this board. We have the lovely Rochelle, right? I don't know how, where she is on your screen, but she's right below me as our vice president. And um, we have um, Trustee Dunworth as our treasurer. Um, we have um, a secretary that is available. Um, that is also, we don't have a secretary right now because our secretary, um, I can't remember who it was. Was it Brian? It was Brian. Was Brian, and he's no longer with us. Um, I would like to clarify that our alternate can hold an office and our two new members can hold an office. And I will open for discussion. Uh, I wanted to ask, is the current president, vice president and treasurer willing to continue for another year? I am, if you would like me to, um, uh, Michelle. I'm willing to do whatever. I, I do enjoy going to the Friends and Foundation meetings. I know that's not necessarily tied to Vice President, but I, I will keep going to those. How about Ron? Yeah, uh, yeah I would be willing to Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll go in depth about a little bit about the secretary. Rochelle, you're willing to work as our Vice President. Is that a yes? Yeah, yes. Okay. And Vice President also takes care of personnel. Um, 
I know I am out of state right now, but I will not always be out of state on these dates because I'll be gone the first two weeks. I'll be back the second two weeks. And when it gets warm in Colorado, I'll be back permanently. Um, so um, that's, I wanted to clarify that. Um, the secretary, um, we do have a staff member that always takes notes and types them up for us. Um, the secretary uh, has a few documents that they need to sign as secretary. And if for some reason we did not have someone in the meeting, they would take the notes. Is that right, Anne? That is correct. I like it when I'm getting things right. It doesn't happen all the time. Pedro, can I add one thing to that? Yeah. As a secretary, if you want to keep the notes yourself, you're allowed to do that. Uh, yeah. Somebody doing it is just a convenience. Yeah, if you want, if you want to take control of that, you're more than welcome. So, do we have anyone who would like an office, or who would who are interested in any of the positions? Because, um, yes, um, Rochelle, Ron, and I, um, I will say, Ron, I would endorse full heartedly as treasurer because he has gone so far into this facilities. He knows it front, back, and sideways. He, as you can tell, is always looking for ways to save us money and investigating them. I don't think we could have a better person that I know doing that job for us. I think we're very fortunate. So someone could propose a slate. Yeah, I propose that uh, uh, we, we elect the president, vice president, and the treasurer, the current ones, for the, the year 2022. Is and that's a motion? Yes. Okay, I need a second on that. I second, second. that motion. Okay, Jeremy, second that. Um, so we would have um, Kendra Adams as the president, um, Rochelle Brodsky as our vice president, and Ron Dunworth as our treasurer. All in favor say aye. 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 For those opposed, Motion passes unanimously. Now let's talk about, do we have a volunteer that would like to be a secretary? Don't speak up at once. Frank, would you be interested in serving in that capacity knowing you've, seen, uh, you've had two years of seeing how easy as far as purposes it is? Uh, I was opening it up to the two new board members, um, <laughs> but if no one wants it, I you know. <laughs> All right, I'll ask them first. Jeremy, would you be interested in being secretary this year? Yes. All right. Cole, would you be interested? No. All right. So Jer Jeremy would like to take that position. Right. Um, I'm seeing your hand I, I do need, um, <laughs> Frank, you're, you're good. I know you're on another board and that keeps you busy. So you, you're gonna, and you already wear two hats in ours um, boards. So, um, it, and it, it, I, I would need a motion from someone other than Jeremy and a second from a, someone probably other than Jeremy. I move the Jerry, Jeremy Valderrama uh, be our new secretary. I second it. Okay, I'm not sure who the second was. Cole. 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 Okay, sorry, it's a little hard. I should know his voice better though. Um, all approve, all, all in favor, aye. Aye. Aye, Jeremy, you can vote here for yourself. Aye then. That all opposed motion um, passes unanimously. So um, for the record, our slate of officers will be uh, Kendra Adams, president, Rochelle Brodsky, vice president, secretary, Jeremy Balderrama. Did I say it right? Uh, how about that? Okay, she can be taught. And Ron Dunworth, our treasurer. Thank you everyone for your time and effort. We appreciate it. Um, now we, and Rochelle, you said you'd be happy to stay on as a liaison for Friends and Foundation? Yep. Okay. And then the rest of us, we do need to kind of go inside and see which board meetings we'd like to um, look into, um, something that interests you. All right. We have um, a slate of officers. Um, Next is standing committees. Standing committees, which are an audit committee the long-term planning committee and the personnel committee. Okay, on the long-term planning committee, I'm gonna address that one first. Ron and I have been participating in it for two years now. Um, we've got the ball rolling. I'm willing to stay on that committee 
Oh, no, this is a short term. The long term is different, isn't it? No, that, that's it. Okay. So I personally think Ron and I have got pretty good handle on where we're going. Um, if someone else would like to say no, they would like to take that. You're not going to hurt my feelings, but um, I think you're I just think I, I'm willing to stay on if Ron, Ron, are you also willing to stay on that committee? Ron Denworth. What? Are you willing to stay on the? Yes, I am. Uh, we okay. have a lot of you uh, practical and professional talent on the board if they'd be interested. Well, how many people can be on the uh, committee? We can have as many as you want, but when you have more than two board members, we have to advertise the meeting of the committee. If you only have two board members working with the library team, then it becomes, uh, you don't have to advertise it and open up for public partnership, I see. So and it has had, to be supported. Now we had three board members, full disclosure last year, Ron Park wanted to be on it. And it was a little cumbersome, but it was doable, it was doable. Kendra? Yeah, it was doable. It just makes it, it's a little bit more difficult because we do have to post it ahead of time. And it ha it does have to be recorded, correct, Dan? We've been recording our meetings, so it is recorded. And the public, of course, is allowed to attend. Um, so it's doable if a third person wants to be on the committee. Uh, it's easier with two because you don't have to record it and you don't have to post it. And so I'm it's, assuming it, that committee is the one that's going to be dealing with the large contracts. They would be looking at. So when we did our facilities plan, you know, we kind of said we would keep looking at what's going on in the community as far as, you know, where is the next growth area and when do we need another branch library or when do we decide to build a regional library? So I don't think they're going to be looking, meeting as often as they did last year, because last year we were working on the facilities plan, so meetings were pretty regular. Every week. Um, yeah, almost every week. And so we've kind of gone to quarterly meetings now just to keep our finger on the pulse of you know, what's happening in West Greeley, what's happening in Rain Dance, what's going on in the rest of our community just to keep an eye on it. We're not at a point right now where we can do anything about it. We're just looking to the future. What, what, what the committee developed really was a strategy for long-term growth. Right? And it, it started with developing, you know, all of the population statistical growth numbers and, and where the MPO and other people saw areas to be and where we should focus in terms of our next branch library. So a lot of that data is what drove us really to, to firmly, you know, commit to the severance plan. And then it uh, also talks about, are we going to build regional libraries or branch libraries? And then what other key elements are part of it? And Katie, who's no longer with us, a lot of it, she focused us back to making sure that we, we checked all the boxes and everybody would say, why are you going through all of that? And the reason and rationale is we wanted to check the temperament of the population of the district, the employees, and check our financial status and what we can and can't do. And that's essentially what the committee did. And if you think about it, we have three projects that are working simultaneously. Ron Clark, God bless them, said that's crazy because it's too confusing. We should do one at a time. But we have three projects that we need desperately as a district in play right now. But what are we going to do in the next three to five to eight years is very key. Mm -hmm. And together, that's the kind of work it requires. So it, it's not really contract. It's more making sure that we don't obviously do something that's illegal, but it's really more theoretical planning, uh, you know, evaluating, testing, you know, taking the roadshow out to all of our stakeholders, saying, here's what we're planning to do. What do you think? We did that in Severance in School District and to the town of Windsor and Ann and Katie did a great gentleman job in doing that. So it feels pride of including everybody. So that's kind of what the committee did. Does that help? Yeah. It's not it's not a short term, it's not the, uh, a building committee or anything like that. It's, it's mm -hmm. a, do we have a committee that's dealing with these three projects as such? Well yes we do. And uh, it's the same Andrew's on and I am and is we have two stakeholders, you know, 
uh, Casey's on it, Bud is on it as directors in terms of working with our project uh, coordinator, the man we hired to run this for, and, and try to keep it all on track, keep it within budget, and, and then uh, gather information all the way it's going. So what do we call that? Is that the same committee? It's it's not the same committee. It's, it's an actual building committee. So it's a, not a long-term planning committee. It is a short-term building committee, which which will be done when the building projects are done. So, and currently that is the same two people because they were intimately involved in the facilities plan process. And so the two of them remained on the building committee, but the building committee meets every two weeks. And as Ron said, it's Kendra and it's um, Ron, Casey and me, but is in an IT advisory capacity right now um, and it's all the building people. And then ultimately we'll probably be adding either subcommittees to that so that when we start talking about the severance build, we'll have somebody from severance on that committee, that subcommittee that'll talk about, you know, what the people in severance are saying or what they need to know. Um, so, but that doesn't need to be Ron and Kendra, that could change too. I can tell you the work on that committee is a little more, uh... I wouldn't say adversarial, but it, it can be because it starts talking about what we can do, what we can afford, what we want to do, and we want to do short term and let's do this because we're going to need it long term, but we can only afford short term. So you get into a lot of that interaction. And it's been doubly hard to add the point that we're working, especially on this facility, with budgetary numbers that were two years old. So uh, we're kind of walks in out like what can we do now and my play has always been watch the numbers see what our interest rates going to be on our loan when that number rolls in what can we afford going forward and how does that modify our ability to actually uh, pay some of these uh, escalated costs you know can we do it yes or no um, and that's kind of what my development has been Kendra's a little more of um, the aesthetics, the, uh, the feel for it, the structure, you know, inputting, trying to keep it all going in one direction. So that's but what, I, but I'm, what I'm hearing is Cole would like to review our contracts. And as a board member, I believe he has that right on any contract. Is that correct, Dan? So we have our contracts are already in place. We have a contract and that was approved um, for all three of those for Wember. We have the contract for ratio and for friends and Pittman. I think what she's su suggesting is that Cole as a member would be able to ensure real time that we're within the contract or we're not doing something that's in violation of the agreement we made with them. And the two that the vendors we pick are complying with their contract control commitment. That, well, I, it, it is, um, if you're looking for uh, somebody offering to assist in the committee that seems to me be the one that I would be more interested in. We're coming up on that. Okay. All right. I mean no I, and I, I hear that. Okay. So I think President Adam you want to take that into consideration with Anne when you're determining the size of that committee. Yeah I I I have some mixed feelings about having public meetings for your building planning meetings because a lot of the detail that happens in those meetings you know, you're, you're going back and forth on what's possible and what's not possible. And um, I don't know that you want the public attending that those meetings, hearing everything that goes through that review process. Um, I mean, when they're, they're costing out every little thing and, and deciding whether or not you're going to remodel the bathrooms or whether you're going to wait on the remodel of the bathroom. It seems like overkill to have three, well, three I'm board members in having. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that, that uh, I'm just, I, I assume ultimately the president decides who's going to be on committee. Isn't For ad hoc true? committees, it is up to the president yeah. to appoint. Yep. The other problem with making it a public meeting is they get quickly down into the minutia. And the, the chart of the committee is how much higher level is. We just don't need people arguing about the color of the walls or the color of the carpet, uh, simply because it's not the, the task of the committee. Well, it's, it's professional. can we have an alternate thing on that committee? Would that be an option? You could do that. I mean, you could have somebody attend some of the meetings and. 
Would you mind? Would you be interested in being an alternate because there's going to be some I can't make or Ron can't make? There may be some that I would want you to make instead of me. Would that work? Would yeah. that? Yeah, I do. Too. Yeah. <laughs> would that be of interest of you, Cole? To you, yes, Cole? Sure. And I okay, understand well, the whole adding the public element to this. It should I be. Think it's tough to do, but yeah. unless it's really necessary. I get it. Yeah, I think I think there's going to be times where I'm not going to be able to make it um, due to commitments. And um, Ron said there's times he thinks he'd rather you step in. And we've got a great asset in you. I, I'm thrilled that you're on the board. And I think that might be um, a good way of going about it. And um, you and I see each other on a personal level um, enough. I can keep you abreast of what's going on. OK, okay? Yep. all right. So for those of you who do not know, full disclosure, we share great, we share grandchildren. Uh, all right. Um, what well, our other meeting, uh, other board? Um, uh, the, audit committee. The uh, treasurer committee. The audit committee. So Got usually, it. yep, usually that's okay. the treasurer. And then usually uh, the board president or vice president will attend if the board president is not available. Yeah, the, the audit committee is pretty straightforward. We. Uh, our, the first year I did that, our auditor was terrible. He assigned it to uh, one of his subordinates within his company, and it was a virtual nightmare. They were late and everything, and we ended up having our meeting in November, which we should have had it in like August, September. And uh, Ann and I talked about it, and she wrote a threatening email or a letter, and we we're going to fire them. And, the owner of the company stepped up and he's made some commitments and some promises and he's been handling our account personally and the interaction has been good. As a matter of fact, we had a call two days ago with them to answer some questions about ensuring our process flow for managing the loans for the, uh, the, the financing that's coming in from the bank and, and how to ensure that we keep those funds separate according to, uh, to law. And so Anne is making some modifications and Aaron's making some modifications in our bookkeeping process. But the audit committee is pretty straightforward. Uh, Aaron, our bookkeeper, provides information that's requested with the auditor. They run the test and the sample. And he asks some questions. And if it looks good, he stamps it. And then we have a meeting with all the stakeholders on the call uh, to approve it. Fairly straightforward. It's fairly simple. Okay. All right. Um, I, I think we'll keep it as is the president if the president's available, vice president, president is not available. I think we'll just keep it as that. Um, was there another committee on the personnel I'm committee, which is traditionally the vice president, and last year it was Rochelle and Frank? Um, I think because Rochelle is going to be doing so much with foundations. Rochelle, do you want to continue on with personnel or would you be happy to see that go by? Um, we haven't done a whole lot with it. I mean, we had a meeting. It, it's rare that the personnel committee meets. I will say that it's only if there's a huge change, um, whether, you know, we're facing legal action because an employee is unhappy um, if we were to do another salary survey, then you would be involved in reviewing the salary survey um, results before they go to the full board. Uh, if there were a major change um, in personnel that might draw public attention, you would have a meeting. Um, so it's rare that the personnel committee meets. I think last year they met one time. Um, so it's not a huge time commitment. And when you said the word legal problem, I would like to have see if um, Trustee Gershner would be um, willing to serve on that committee as well. Cole, would you be willing to? Yeah, yeah. Serve? Okay, so that new committee is going to be Rochelle as vice president and um, Cole Gershner, Trustee Gershner. Frank, you got away without having to do anything. <laughs> well, I always forget, you know, for those who don't realize, Frank is our alternate on this board, and he's also our liaison for the town of Severance. So he already has two hats, and we don't want too many because then he looks like a jester. So, 
Um, no, but I think I think Cole would be great on that. Um, are there any others that I'm missing? Okay. We're good. So moving right along. Um, public access to library information. First, the posting location for board meeting announcements, which is resolution 2202. So our place, our um, our places to post are on the library district's website. And then in on the bulletin board, which is right outside this door in the glass case where people don't have access to remove things. So those have been traditionally the places that we post announcements of board meetings and any other information that's required to be posted for the public. Okay, and do you have that prepared for tonight? Yes. Okay. Well, it was. I'm trying to. I'm trying to scroll on my. Is it, I think it's on. It's on screen, isn't it? I yes. don't. Oh, okay. Resolution twenty two oh two designating public posting place of notices for Clearview Library District in twenty twenty two. Okay, and can I sign that via DocuSign, Attorney Garcia? Yes, you may. I can uh, have my office assist you with that. And also, um, Rocha Brodsky, please. Oh, no. No, board, no, no it's board Secretary. So that'll I be Jeremy. That. Jeremy Balderrama. Balderrama. Am I getting that close? Okay. Yes, All right. So if you could um, docusign to both of those. You need to uh, need a, You need a motion uh, that uh, passes. Right. I do need a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the resolution and um, maintain the same locations for notice posting of the website and the glass display case. I need a second. Second. Second by Trustee uh, Dunworth. First with um, uh, Rochelle Brodsky um, about the motion forward. All in favor accepting resolution 2202 designating public posting places for of notices for Clearview Library, Library District in 2022 say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right, sorry, I went, I skipped that one. Thank you for keeping me aligned yet again. Um, public access to library information, and this is informative. So this one is just a you know, matter of record that the library website is where we post location. Uh, that's where library information is posted. It's where policies are posted. It's where board information is also posted. Um, so public access to library information is the library's website and has been for many years now. Um, and you don't need to vote on that one. It's just a point of information for everyone. Okay. And website is updated regularly by uh, Brad Vogler and our communications person who will be with us hopefully on the 14th. Awesome, I'm excited for that. All right, investment of library funds. Director, um, Trustee um, Dunworth, our treasurer. Yeah, thank you. Uh, if, if any of you have followed, you know, quick, you know, close to look at uh, the year end numbers uh, in the detail part, you'll see earnings on investments, uh, number 3610. And uh, the estimate for our 2021 earnings was $3,056. That's against balances, and you've seen the amount of cash we have as we, in our accounts with Colo Trust uh, from a low of $4 million to a high of $7.5 million. So if you just apply the math, we are making less than one fourth of one half of 1% interest. Mm -hmm. But if you look at Colo Trust webpage, they were put together to make an investment, protect your money, and effectively the net result is they are nothing more than just an investment company that I think probably looks pretty darn well because we're not seeing anything from their effort. Uh, a couple of points I like to make, the Standard & Poor's Index closed out last year at a 28% gain uh, for the S&P 500. The S&P 500 since its inception in you know, 1927, that was before the Great Depression, it's been averaging 
10 and a half percent for this period of time. So uh, we, we seem to be playing with having in our investments in funds that are making zero, uh, mm -hmm. less almost less than zero. If we were closing out a year where inflation was at over eight and a half percent for the year. So the net result is if we have $7 million in these investments, we've lost 8%. Does that make sense to everybody? Absolutely. So I, I started on my own talking to my financial guy uh, out of Denver and I explained to my situation. And I said, how good, you know, I, I track how well I'm doing, he's doing for me and he's doing very well. Uh, but then when Anna and I talked about it, she was concerned about, we have to make sure that we don't do anything reckless or we have to follow the law. So we uh, referred the question to uh, our attorney, and Mr. Garcia did some research. I believe he talked to somebody at Weldon. Yes, I I spoke with uh, John Lafave. He's the Weld County Treasurer. And when I spoke to him, I found out he was actually one of the authors of uh, the statute that uh, has the restrictions and and uh, and rules for. Uh, what we can invest in as a public entity. And uh, the great in, uh, great news, uh, Trustee Dunworth, is he is available and would be happy to meet with you and discuss uh, alternatives and, and ways that uh, we can maximize our investments uh, under the law. Well, I, I want to do that, and I want to explore other venues to what we can do within the law. And so I'd like to set up a committee to investigate that, because right now, we're losing money sitting on money, and, and it doesn't make sense. But we have to ensure that uh, anything we do is obviously approved by the board, but it's fully researched to, to ensure that we're within the law and that we're doing what's best in terms of preserving the base, right? So uh, to that, I'd like to set up a committee, and I'd like you know, Cole to participate in that because of his background in helping me work with the gentleman from Well County and everybody else, understanding the law, the rights that we can get, and put together a package if there is one that would allow us to take our working, our reserves, put them in a working fund somewhere that follows the law and allows us to generate some of the interest dollars. Now, I, I've never been fond of government and para. You know, we're into para. Para's gone broke with already. Uh, and I think all of you realize that we have a $1.2 million liability on our books because Para charged everybody back. And when Anna and I talked about that, you know, the auditor says, oh, don't worry about that. Well, I do because it's on our books. So I, I think what I'd like to be able to do in conclusion is get the board's approval to put together a task force, a committee. What do you call it, Anna? It would be an ad hoc committee. An ad hoc committee. And you would, yeah, you would look at uh, at options and you would look at um, a policy because we would need to adopt an investment policy. And, and then. Would, so I would leverage called your yeah, legal I, background I, I, as a board member. would be willing to participate in that. Okay. You said the well. So, yes. Okay. With that being said, um, I do we need to vote on an ad hoc committee or can I just say we got just one? Point. You appoint, appoint, Madam President. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I would like to see an investment committee, ad hoc committee put together. And I would agree with Trustee Dunworth and Trustee Gershner working together to bring us information on that. And I appreciate them taking that on. I think it's um, I think it's important and I think it's easy to get put in our box. And this is what we do because we've always done it, but I think Times are changing, and I think it won't hurt us to be better informed. Yeah, thank you very much. It just it just drives me nuts to see a fourteen dollar interest payment on a three and a half million dollar account. Yeah. <laughs> I would want better. <laughs> uh, Friends and Foundation is dealing with the same thing. Yeah. Trying to find out what's a safe way to invest people's um, gifts and donation. Oh. I'm sure that once these gentlemen do that, they'd be happy to share their information with friends and foundations. And is my assumption correct, gentlemen? Absolutely. All right. I think we're, uh, there's a lot of people who just spoke, but nobody's really doing anything other about it simply because they're fearful of losing money. You know? uh, like I said, Standard & Poor's has been doing this since 1927, and they're 10 and a half percent. They had after seven major 
recessions and, and one depression. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's get it going. You two, I'll leave it to the two of you to set your meetings in time. And um, Anne, can we have that put on the agenda in the future as um, a an feedback? updated report? Sure, we can have whenever they're ready to do an updated report. I think we just go ahead and edit an updated report. If they don't have one, they don't have one. When, but when they get going, it'll be good information. Yeah, I think Cole's already started as well. So that, <laughs> Thank All right. You. I'm done. All right. Thank you, Trustee Dunworth. Um, engagement letter for the 2021 audit, um, Director Clean. So we have the engagement letter from Hinkle. Um, Hinkle has done our audit for the past two years. As Ron said, we had a rocky, um, actually three, this would be the third year. We had a rocky year, um, but last year they did a much better job. And um, I would recommend that we work with them again. Ron talked about the phone call we had the other day. Jim is ready to get started. Our bookkeeper, Aaron, says we have pretty much everything ready. So we'd like to try to get our audit done a little sooner this year. Um, I would recommend that we stay with Hinkle and Company and approve the engagement letter. I would concur. Um, so, we have a commitment from them to keep working forward as a team, that the same team we had last year where we don't have the hiccup. We don't know if we'll have the same team because like all businesses, uh, people are coming and going in businesses. But I think Jim Hinkle, who is the owner of the company, is committed to making sure that we have uh, someone very competent working on our audit. Okay. Well, I guess that was my question that, that you feel like we we have the, the owner in our pocket. If we're not happy, we can give him a buzz and get things. Yeah, for a call and he gave us, he set up a call with us 24 hours. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, then I need a motion to um, go ahead and move forward with the letter of engage with the engagement letter. Um, I hear by motion. Okay. We have Jer uh, Jeremy moves that we ex um, that we accept the engagement letter with the uh, 2021 audit. Do I have a second? Yes. I'll second that. Okay. We have. Uh, uh, Trustee Balderrama, I'm gonna. I'm really working hard. And <laughs> was made the motion, and uh, Trustee Brodsky second. Um, do we any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes unanimously to go ahead and um, get that engagement letter out with the auditor. Okay. Okay. The other one. Wow, a lot of really cool things going on. Approve the Bank of the San Juan's Glacier Bank proposal for lease financing for a library branch in Severance. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, would one of you for our new trustees and just quick, just a real question mark for our two trustees. Have either of you been able to read our um, our plan, our short term, long term range planning um, that was on the website? Yes, okay. If you have not read that, please take a look at that. That that is on the website. Um, um, Anne can help you find it. Um, it does kind of um, outline why we're where where why we're where we at where we are at and where we are going. And so I think it's really important information. Um, and on that, without further ado. This, I will let Ann and Ron explain this financing. So this was, uh, it took us a while because we needed to you know, decide what we were doing and then get the land purchased. Um, and we've been working with Piper Sandler for a good year now. Um, and they were kind of just waiting in the wings for us to finish all of our facilities planning and make all of our decisions. And they wrote the RFP and they put it out there. And uh, they got back, I think, four or five responses. But the one that rose to the top was the Bank of the San Juans um, Glacier Bank, which is a division of Glacier Bank, um, primarily because they met all of our conditions. And best of all, 
uh, the 2.09 interest rate is is the best part of the deal. So, Ron, what would what would you add to that? Yeah, not much. You know, we were building our financial analysis around a 2.5 percent interest rate. So, woohoo! You know, we had a better deal. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned with the president uh, going online and then the. Uh, Right around Treasury saying, you know, interest rates are going to go up in March. So we want to get this done now before yeah. that happens, if we can. Yeah. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, we lock it down, I guess, is the term we want to use. Uh, and for I mean, the guys from Sadler did a good job. Um, we were able to put our best financial foot forward, and we were able to get a bank who's willing to work with us. And if the Colorado based bank, I don't know if they're still Colorado, they're owned by Glacier, which is out of Montana, but uh, regardless, uh, we got a deal. Uh, right, and and so this is not the last thing that will come before you. This is just approving their proposal. Um, Tom Peltz, who is our bond counsel, will be working to write up all the formal language, and that'll come before the board at the February meeting. So, but we need to pr uh, approve their proposal tonight. And then the final paper paperwork will be coming. Understand from the new board members, we're not borrowing money to construct a building. We are doing a lease back, a buyback, because it's against Colorado law to sign a long term of the yeah, agreement to borrow money. And this has been a process that has been used by other libraries, by fire districts, and other entities around the state. Absent of bond. What's that? Mm -hmm. Absent of bond. Yeah. So um, it, 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 it's nothing new, but it's a system and a process, I think, that should allow us to build a library in Severance without having to go back out to the bondholder, or I mean, to the, to the, uh, to the, to the customer base, if you will, and, and get a, put it on vote and get it approved because we had uh, two bond issues we went out on different design. So um, it allows us to take and, and, and do what we need to do, expanding our, you know, total square footage now move forward. And I think it would be a process and methodology that we can use in the future as well when we're ready to build another branch. We're getting 5.8 million and we're paying that off in 20 years and we call it a lease. Yeah. Is that right? That's correct. Right. They yeah. own the building until we pay it off. <laughs> it's their building. They're leasing it to us. They're actually the fee owner. Think of leasing the this, machine. This is, this is uh, also subject to annual appropriation. So if, if we go through a year where we do not, uh, the, the district does not approve the payment, then we lose the bill. So who's the fee owner of the I, I believe that uh, they have a deed of trust. I don't know if they have a, a, uh, a warranty deed on that. I, Tom Peltz of Kutak Rock is our bond counsel. I'll I'll check with him. You just did a closing, right? Mm -hmm. well, we did the closing we are, we are on the, the property. Owners. We did the closing on the land. Right. Right. Well, it's it's in the name of the library. So, so that right, right. but right. the building itself will be leased. The construction of the building will. We don't own the building. It's a lease. Okay. So we pay it off. Do, do we buy it? Do we buy the lease out for one dollar? So, a couple things. Could we go a little deeper? Because I'm, or at least check Piper Sandler. I want people to understand our new board members. Those are that's our broker for. Is that correct, Ron? That's who we're we've hired to help find, who put the RFP out and try to find this financing. Right. We did not do this. We worked with Piper Sandler to put the RFP out to the banks. And then Mr. Peltz is bond counsel. Bond, bond attorney counsel. Right. Um, and then just, just to kind of let you know, if you pull up other libraries that are new, you will see that they are not owned by the library, that they are um, the one I looked up, a couple I looked up in Garfield County were all owned by Wells Fargo. So it, right, the fire station is in the same position. The, the new fire station that they're building up in Rain Dance is a lease situation too. Uh, 
and High Plains Library District has built, I think, just about all of their new libraries as leases. They have not asked for a, a mill levy increase or a bond in quite some time in High Plains. So those are uh, either certificates of participation or leases. Um, and when you don't have a huge project, they generally go with bank leasing instead of certificates of participation. And our project fell under the not that big a project. And so instead of certificates, they recommended bank leasing. Yeah, in the financial world, we're a little bit panicked. We're a little bit panicked. Oh, big and it's funny how perception is so different. I see this as huge. <laughs> so perception is the king, huh? All right. Um, we need a we need approval. Any further questions? I want to make sure our um, we've got our direction and everyone is confident. And um, so, Andy, did you have any questions about the email that I sent? Something. There it is. I'm sorry, Jeremy. Did you say something? Yeah so, I would, yeah, so and did, did you have any questions or get a response about the email that I sent about this? Yes. And Jeremy okay. had a, a concern about conflict of interest, which we forwarded to attorney Garcia. I don't believe that there is a conflict of interest. <clears throat> Jeremy wasn't on the board when we started this process. Um, he's not on the board at the bank or involved in the bank. It was his mother-in-law who formerly worked for the bank. So there doesn't appear to be a conflict of interest. Oh, okay. Thank you for sharing. But, but it, was, it was a blind deal too. I mean, yep. maybe we had an agent who kind of this was, and we weren't involved. <clears throat> All right. We didn't solicit the banks. The banks responded to an RFP. All right, perfect. So is there any further discussion? Without further discussion, if everyone's in, if we have a consensus that we are interested in moving forward, I am looking for a motion. I thought it was a 20 year lease. It is, well, that says 30. It, that I asked them about and they said that was a requirement. It is a 20 year, but- Well, the amortization and the other page is 20, but that's right. 30. Right, it is, I asked about that, and that is standard um, and required by the banks, but it is a 20-year amortization, but it is subject to a 30-year leasehold interest. And I can get an explanation from uh, Tom Peltz on that, but I did question that when I saw the proposal and they- I, I, I can't see why this is not a 20-year lease. Have a release of that twenty years. I, I'll I'll get an okay. answer, but I I know when I questioned it, it's like why is it thirty when it's twenty years? They said that's a standard line in their proposals, and I can get a better explanation than that. Maybe the other classify the rate too. Principal only. Principal only. Principal only. Yeah. The bank would want to keep the principal only. No, there's no money. That goes by making sense. Uh, and just we're going to get an actual contract at some point. This is just uh, this is just approving this proposal that we're going to proceed with the proposal, have the attorneys work on the contract, and yes. we'll actually get something at yes. legal terms in front of yes. us. Yes, yeah. This is the not bond, the that's what the bond council does. And and just you know, so I mean, what Nate Eckla from Piper Sandler said is. The bank can also back out if in the next, before we sign all the documents, they find reason that we're a bad risk, they can back out. Um, so it's not a done deal until we sign all the paperwork. Get it moving then. And you're talking contract at that point, correct? Right. So this, all this is, all this letter is saying we want to investigate further. Um, I, I guess with, with I, I also saw that call. And I, I'm glad you brought that up because I was looking at the, at the 20 year amortization. I'm like, well, wait, I thought I saw 30 years. So, um, and it could be that in this letter, they're saying they're looking at a 20, but maybe it could go up to a 30, um, which we're not going to do. We're gonna keep it at 20, um, that's our goal. Um, but I think right now we're asking for, the, for permission based on this letter to start negotiations with them 
to go to secure the 20 year loan at that rate. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so again, if everyone's comfortable with pursuing and going forward for to negotiate for a 20 year loan uh, lease, let me clarify that. I'm sorry, I said loan, but it is a lease, a 20 year lease with this um, proposal, which is what we're looking for in a contract from them. This only allows us to pursue that contract and see if we can come to terms. So I still, I would need a motion in order to move forward on this option to move forward to see if we can come to contract with this um, for a lease for the new branch. I so move. Okay, Christy Brodsky has moved that we move forward with Bank of San Juan's offer, um, knowing that we are looking for a 20 year lease. Do I have a second? Second. And, um, Trustee Gershner seconded it. Um, further discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, passes unanimously. Um, upcoming agenda, and Nope, but there's one more item. You, you probably have the old, old oh, agenda. Thought... There was one extra item, which was approve the purchase of a courier van and authorize Director Kling to sign relevant documents. So after last week's, or two weeks ago, after our um, building committee meeting, when we saw the timetable that we would possibly be moving into the Ash Street building in June, uh, it became apparent that we needed to start looking for a courier van, because at that point, we'll have to move materials from there to here. And then ultimately, when Severance is built to all three locations, and knowing that vehicles are difficult to obtain right now uh, because of the chip shortage and having a former board member who works for Centennial uh, um, Leasing, uh, I called Brian and said, hey, Brian, we're going to need a vehicle. And he asked, well, what kind of vehicle? And I described what we were looking for. And then Ron also spoke to him. Ron Dunworth also spoke to him. And so Brian said, OK, so a, a cargo type van that you can move materials we also have a contract with CSU where we've purchased vehicles like that for them. And we said, yes, yeah, start looking. And lo and behold, um, he called me back and he said, oh, we just missed one. One came on the market. It's a Dodge uh, cargo van, a ProMaster. Uh, but there's another organization that got in there before I did. And so if they back out, would you be interested? Um, and he said, this is a great deal because it's a brand new, not used vehicle, a 2021 used models are selling for $50,000. This one is $53,000. So would the library be interested? So I talked to Ron and we agreed that we need a vehicle. We need to get it sooner than later. This is a good deal because it's brand new under warranty. And so um, we are asking the board to approve the purchase. I am allowed to approve a purchase up to 30,000. This is $53,000. Um, so we need board approval. And then Brian will deliver it tomorrow if you approve and we'll sign the check. And what vehicles other than the first one we have? We none, have we have none. none. Okay. Yeah, we have no other vehicles. Um, and I think Ron had passed a picture around of the vehicle. It is white, uh, which means we can put a wrap on it with the library's logo. You know, can we have a discussion about the wrap of that vehicle? Just... Uh, well, I, I think that would be premature right now. We don't even have a communications well, person. I, I know, but not, not right now, but I really look forward to it. Well, I think what we'll do is, is have the communications person come up with a design for what the wrap would look like. I would suggest we just buy some magnetic Clearview library plates inside of the vehicle and leave it alone because you know, for a lot of reasons, we can discuss them later. We can, we can discuss that. I mean, it's white, that's the upside. It's not gonna interfere with a dark color. Uh, whatever we do will be fine. It's empty, which is perfect to use to move books and shelves to the Ash Street facility once we're ready in 60 to 90 days. And then Shelby and the Regan talking to Brian so as we can add 
the infrastructure to that van that will need it for I have a hit by water. No. Well, I don't, I don't think so. No, I believe it's two seats in the front and that's it. It's empty. Yeah, it's empty. <laughs> so it, it's a perfect moving material cargo van for now. It's it's a high rise, so you can stand up tall if you're six foot tall. And then we for two to three thousand dollars is what he's quoting or telling us is we can, you know. We can modify the vehicle to uh, whatever you need to put forward. I think let's have this discussion before we get too into the weeds of designing something, because I think we may see our needs change for this vehicle after we are in. Um, with the age of our bookmobile, this may be a perfect, um, well, obviously we'll use it to cart between the two, the three places, um, Ash Street, Third Street, and Severance, um, but it may also be a good one to take to nursing homes, daycares, schools in the future, and we may want to, before we invest in a wrap, really decide after, you know, in 18 months to two years, what is the best use for the vehicle? And if the vehicle is too big, the price point we're at right now is Sticker. Right. These vehicles sell for a premium price on the other side. Ten points, you said a used vehicle of this type would be about fifty thousand dollars. So uh, we're in a good position, and if it doesn't suit our needs later in a year or two after we made the move, then we can replace it with a more suitable vehicle once we develop the experience and uh, not lose money in the process. Where will it be stored? It's going to be out in the parking lot for now. Uh, we don't have a garage. The bookmobile needs to be in the garage because of the fluids in the bookmobile and because it's winter. So right now it'll be out in our parking lot. And I think that was also something we looked at at our street that we do have parking. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to cover everything we have. Um, but we do have parking at Ash Street that would we do possible. we do and I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend keeping it there just yet because we're no, not no, there. No, no, um, no. I'm saying once we're there. <laughs> once we're there uh, for security issues purposes now, I wouldn't want it there without anyone keeping an eye on things. It's better here where we have security cameras. Absolutely, hundred percent. That wasn't my intent. Sorry, um, but back to the course. Does does any, let's talk about the courier well, van itself. Frank, I think Frank had something to say. I was going to say, um, if we just focus on the purchase of the van, is the van itself a necessary item, and should we purchase it, and then uh, just for its utility, as opposed to what we're going to wrap it, do with it, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Is this a worthwhile purchase today? And should we move on it today and, and basically hold off on anything else? Is, is the, van, the, sense, uh, the van itself is line item in our annual budget, $60,000. I, I guess what I'm saying is, is that's what's before us today. And correct. So before we start debating uh, where are we going to park it, where is it going to? No, I, I agree. Well, right, and that's right. Ryan like found what we need for a good price. Well, yeah. I would say for a fair price for today's market. <laughs> yeah, I mean the market's not going to get any better. It's still two, probably two to three years off before it improves. So it's now or never really. And it has been part again going back to the the planning that we did. Vehicles were part of our planning. It is in the budget, and it has been planned for. It's been approved. And, and it was approved in the budget, correct. Any other questions? All right, I'm going out to the floor for a motion. I move the motion. <laughs> okay. I authorize uh, Director King to sign relevant documents. One quick question, are we with this protocol for bidding process? It, it's very difficult because our, our procure, uh, procurement policy actually says we would put out an RFP, but putting out an RFP for a vehicle, especially in these times, is not going to work. Um, 
by the time you'd put the RFP out, it would be silly. And so I would recommend that we approve the purchase and set that policy aside for this instance. Um, because yeah, there is a vehicle available. Can the board make an exception to the policy? Right. Yeah. Garcia. Yeah, so we waive it. We're waiving. We're waiving any competitive bidding. So we need to add that to our um, motion, I would assume. Yes. Could you re make a new motion, Director uh, Trustee Dunworth? I make a motion that we approve the purchase of the courier bag, authorize the director to sign the relevant documents, and also include a waiver of the city policy simply because of the nature of the industry today and the inability to really get a response on an RFP for a vehicle. They won't do it. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion by Trustee Dunworth, second by Trustee Brodsky. Um, any further discussion? All approve. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Motion passes unanimously. We are getting us a van. I think I know a mobile services that are probably going to do a jiggy dance tomorrow. <laughs> So what we get if I do donuts in the parking lot? If we could do donuts in the parking lot, yeah. So right now, the only people that will be authorized to drive it, just so you know this, are the people who are currently authorized to drive the bookmobile because anyone we add to the policy now will increase the cost of our policy. And we don't really know who's going to be driving this vehicle yet. So we have five capable people who drive a much larger vehicle. Um, and the director is not one of them. And so, <laughs> so it'll be those five people who will be able to move it, take it if we need to move it to keep the, the engine working or whatever. Um, and then we'll add people when we need someone to become a courier driver or when we need to start moving equipment and materials over to Ash Street. So and I can, was, that, was that mobile service presentation, was that to the entire board? Uh, the mobile services? No. no. Nope. Okay. Well, they did a presentation and I know that they're going to be thrilled to have this opportunity. Uh, I so. have an aside to this purchase and um, I had a very nice tour meeting with Ann earlier this afternoon, by the way. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It was very good. Uh, one of the things I had asked her to send me a week or two ago was the insurance policies that we have and our fleet liability insurance is only for $1 million. So all these people that are driving, doing any kind of business, even in their personal auto, plus these vehicles, the extent of our liability is a million, which is pretty woefully small for an organization of our assets. So I've asked her to check with the insurance company, get their recommendation and Perhaps we'll have to, we should visit that again. Anne, can you add that to the upcoming agenda, please? Sure. Okay, done. Thank you. Um, what other? I know we, we'll have the we'll have a executive session for uh, Director Kling on February. I'll make sure yes. that I get done. Um, get so the upcoming agenda, we have a few policies. We, uh, every year we go through our policies and reaffirm or update them as necessary. So we'll have a few policies on the February agenda. We'll have more information on our lease financing for the severance branch. We'll have the director's evaluation and executive session and anything else that comes up in between then and now, now and then, <laughs> now and then. All right, thank you, Director Kling. Um, with anything else before I ask for adjournment is I know President Gershner had something, anyone else for the agenda? Okay. Um, anyone want to make that last motion for the evening? I need no a motion to adjourn. I need an emotion to adjourn. Oh, so moved. Okay. I have a motion by Trustee Gershner to adjourn. Do I have a second? Yes, second. Mr. Dunworth. Uh, Trustee Dunworth is second. All that would like to go home for the evening and adjourn, say aye. 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 aye.
Aye. Aye. Aye. And if you anyone want to stay longer, okay. <laughs> we are adjourned. Again, thank you, everyone. And um, have a great evening. We got a lot of work done tonight. We've got a lot to go in this next year, and we appreciate every single one of you. So have a great night. Have any everybody. Feel